was this? Nine. Okay, this was number 20. Now, I told you last night, all of these trinomials are going to be perfect square trinomials. And this is because one-fourth is a perfect square. Take the square root of one-fourth. What do you get? One-half. Multiply one-half times two. What do you get? One. Okay. So this factored down to x plus one-half squared is equal to nine-sixteenths. Then you take the square root of both sides, which gave you x plus one-half is equal to plus or minus, and the square root of nine-sixteenths is three-fourths. And when you subtract one-half from both sides, you're going to have to combine it with three-fourths, so you're going to have to have a common denominator. So instead of minus one-half, it's going to be minus two-fourths plus or minus three-fourths. So, so your answer was negative two plus three over four, or negative two minus three over four. When I subtract one-fourth from both sides, I have to find a common denominator. Put it together. Okay? One-half from both sides. So turn that into a fraction of four. <coughs> Two goes into four two times, so one times two is two. The square root of nine sixteenths is the square root of nine, which is three, over the square root of sixteen, which is four. Okay, so it was three fourths. You just take each one individually. That was number twenty. Where did it get you? Here. That one comes before 22. X squared plus 1.4x plus 0.49 equals 0.81. All right, now we don't want to get rid of these decimals because then we're going to put a number in front of x squared. We don't want that. But if you just look at 1.4 and 0.49 and just imagine it without the decimals, that's 14 and 49. Seven. Okay, but there's a decimal here, so it's 0.7. So this factors to x plus 0.7 squared. Because 0.7 times 0.7 is 0.49. Remember your rules for multiplying decimals. There's two decimal places, so you move your answer two decimal places. And 0.7 plus 0.7 in adding, what do you do? You line up the decimals. So that gave us our two numbers that were in the trinomial. Now, 0.81. Just think of 81. Isn't that a perfect square? Oh, wait, we're not there yet. Sorry. Okay. Taking the square root of both sides, I have x plus 0.7 equals plus or minus 0.9. And then subtracting 0.7 from both sides, it's negative 7, excuse me, negative 0.7 plus 0.9, which would be 0.2, or negative 0.7 minus 0.9, which would be negative 1.6. That was 21. Huh? 22. Okay. 22 says the area in square feet of a projected picture on a movie screen, so it's like the picture we see on our screen, is given as A equals 0 0.16 D squared, where D represents the distance of the projector from the screen. 
Now the question says, at what distance? A represents area, D represents distance, and it said, at what distance? So what are we looking for? D, which means they need to give us A. Will the area be 100 square feet? There's A, 100. Okay, so we know A, so we substitute it in. All right, now this one we don't have to factor and solve because there's only a D squared term. All we have to do is isolate D squared and then take the square root of both sides. How do you isolate D squared if it's multiplied by 0.16? You divide by 0.16. All right. What's 100 divided by 0 0.16? 16. I, I didn't just know that off the top of my head. I wrote this problem myself. Okay. It's 625. Now, how do you finish this problem? Take the square root of both sides. So D is equal to plus or minus, and the square root of 625 is 25, but we said what's the distance? Is it 25 feet or is it negative 25 feet? 25. Distance is never negative, okay? So because we were looking for distance, we say, okay, it's not the negative one. It's 25 feet. That was number 22. Okay? What else? 26. Okay, let's do 23 then 26. 23 says in an engineering test, a rocket sled is propelled into a target. The sled's distance from the target is given by the formula. D equals negative 1.5 T squared plus 120. Okay, this, these are really easy, y'all. They're already giving you the formula. You don't have to come up with it on your own. Where T represents the number of seconds after the rocket is shot. All right? So T is, okay, I pull the trigger and I start counting. When I stop counting, D is how far is the rocket? Okay? The question was, how many seconds have passed? So am I trying to figure out the distance or the time? The time, which means they need to give me the distance. And they do. When the sled is 10 meters from the target. 10 meters. Okay? Distance is 10. I'm sorry, it was distance from the target, not distance from being fired. Okay. And so I've got to find this. All right. Do we have to set it all equal to zero and factor if there's only a t squared? No. If all you have is t squared and there's no t, you can just isolate t squared and take the square root of both sides. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to work towards isolating t squared. What are we going to do first? No. no. Subtract, Subtract 120 from both sides which is going to give me negative 110. Then I'm going to divide by negative 1.5, which is good because it'll turn that into positive. Now 110 divided by 1.5, I don't know what that is. Anybody have a calculator? But you can do this from here with your calculator. If you take the square root of both sides, you can simply tell your calculator square root of 110 divided by 1.5 and close your parentheses. And it came out to 8.56 seconds. Okay? So when you want to say, how is this used in your life, who might be shooting missiles and rockets? 